play, you play the games too much, um, get off the games. But we encourage students to to play more. Matter of fact, we're encouraging them to be um, consumers, I mean, producers instead of just being consumers. So we're going to capitalize on our students' interests in esports as a way to begin to funnel them and let them understand the ancillary skills that can be gained from esports to computer coding or from esports to things in machine learning or robotics or drones, or things like that, that they can really um, hone their crafts in secondary education and then go on to STEAM careers. So we're going to host this, this national tournament. Uh, there'll be some demonstrations events, and that's uh, what we want to get as an outcome of this meeting. Um, and then we'll the tournament will go from March the 3rd all the way through June 19th. Now, everybody won't start on March the 3rd. Like That's kind of the first day that we're opening up and saying, hey, the tournament is starting now. But it will go through um, June 19th, which is um, our national championships that we'll host on Juneteenth. Hey, William. Hello, how are you? Am I in the screen? <laughs> you are. So I'm just walking everyone through our um, demonstration and mm -hmm. our sports um, tournaments. So if everybody can see, when we talk about the demonstrations, right, we're talking about just getting a collective of what we call our hive. And our hive consists of our STEAM supporters, our students, our STEAM uh, partners, our STEAM pioneers, and then STEAM Net. So I'll give you guys a perfect illustration of our hive. This is a demonstration event that we did here in Atlanta a little uh, end of last year. Uh, and we just came into a boys and girls club um, and we put on a demonstration event. So just listing out all of the parts of the hive that was represented at this particular tournament. Um, if you see the gentleman here and the young gentleman here, that covers our HBCUs and minority serving institutions, right? So that's a part of the hive. Again, we wanna funnel our students into uh, post-secondary learning through our minority serving institutions and our HBCUs, and then on to STEAM related careers. So these two gentlemen, they're helping us out in the gaming tournament. They're our, our HBCU representatives. If you look at the gentleman back here, um, and then the young lady right here, um, he is the CIO for the Atlanta Housing Authority, and she is the digital div digital divide and in digital inclusion and equity uh, coordinator for the Atlanta Housing Authority. So when we talk about a portion of our hive that really comes to support our work is our STEAM partners, right? That's HUD officials, public housing authority officials, scene, um, city officials. Anybody that serves in that official that capacity that can really gather resources for us. So we have that part of the hive check. Now, when we talk about our STEAM supporters, um, if you look and see, this is the Boys and Girls Club. Our STEAM supporters are places or organizations where students come to. That could be a school. It could be an after-school program. It could be a YMCA, Boys and Girls Clubs. You know, all of those things where students will come, they may or may not. Uh, provide direct STEM programming to students, but they support the work that we do. So if you take a look at the gentleman right here with the blue hat on, he's the director for the Bellwood Boys and Girls Club, and that's the center where, where this is hosted. And um, it sits right inside of our English Avenue community, which is about, um, it's about 90, 80 to 90 percent. HUD assisted or, you know, with HUD assisted families. So we're sitting right in the middle of our target. And uh, Greg and I are somewhere in the background. So that's a uh, representation from SteamNet. And then of course we have the students right here. So this is what we're looking to work toward in, in Vegas is to get a demonstration esports tournament hosted, right? And you guys are gonna play a big part in helping us do that as a collective of our hive. And please feel free to stop me if you have any questions. All right, so why esports? Um, and we have to do some updating of this slide because um, numbers are changing constantly. Uh, so if you look at 2021, uh, it's a billion dollar market, you know, not 
you know, hundreds of thousands of millions. It's a billion dollar market. And, you know, we're two years after this stat was taken. So it's only taken off and taking more growth. And so that's why we say, hey, the students are interested in a market that's a billion dollar market. Let's cultivate that. Um, over 41,000 people are professionally employed in esports, and they're not all gamers. Like, they're not all people that just play Madden and 2K. You have people who host tournaments, you have shoutcasters, which are um, essentially esports sportscasters. You have um, people who set up these tournaments. You have graphic designers and, and um, computer coders who actually make the game. So when you talk about the full ecosystem of esports, you have to make sure you calculate all of these different professions. Um, other thing that's, that I really want to pay attention to is this last bullet point. And this is probably the most um, the, the one that's the most important to me is that a typical esports professional earns anywhere from 50 to 75,000. And that's just average, right? And of course, you can kind of escalate it and de escalate it in, in terms of the markets. But if we can get our students to be able to go into a career that will earn them a livable wage, what we do is we break that cycle of generational poverty, right? We give them the tools in order to be self sufficient. And if they're self-sufficient, the likelihood of their kids being self-sufficient is very high. And then their children as being self-sufficient is very being very high. So, you know, that's the crux of what we're trying to do. Yeah. All right. So how will this thing go? So actually the first part of it starts kind of to the left of the local tournament with the demonstration. And that's really what we want to get out of this call. We want to host a demonstration tournament in Las Vegas in conjunction with the Harrison House. We want to host it in conjunction with the uh, Las Vegas Housing Authority um, and any other STEAM pioneers that are there, right, and STEAM supporters. So we start by hosting a demo, and it is a 10 to 15 student mini demo, mini esports tournament. And what we do is we use that as an opportunity to gather the hive right together um, we'll be able to meet each other we'll be able to kind of plan for what will become the first part of our national tournament which is our local tournament so that's you kind of put that in the back of your mind because i'm going to be asking you guys about that uh in a few all right so then we go on to our local tournament so we'll have a lot of different tournaments that may be going on in and around the city and outside of the city so we take though that local tournament we take the winners of that local tournament, they move on to the regional tournament. Now that regional tournament, we're talking about regions inside of um, Nevada, All right? So Nevada, we've broken it up into HUD regions. We take the, the winners of the local tournament, they go into the regions tournament. The winners of the regional tournament get to represent the state of Nevada in our national tournament. So all of the state winners, then go into the national tournament, and that's the tournament that we're going to host in the um, kind of the Richmond area and during Juneteenth. Any questions about the progression? Okay. All right, so these are some of the games that the students will play. We intentionally selected these games because these are games that the students are playing um, that they play all the time. Right now, I'm sitting in the middle of the after school program. If you look right outside the door, it's a group of students that are playing 2K as we speak. So they they play the games. These are and, and it goes back to creating the interest. So if you say, hey, we're going to put maybe games like Smite or Paladins or maybe League of Legends up here, our students aren't very familiar with those games. So the interest may not be there. But if you say, hey, we're playing Madden, we're playing Rocket League, we're playing Multiverse and 2K and Brawlhalla, they know those games. So these are the games that the students are going to select to play as a part of the tournament. Now, going back, um, Greg mentioned the tournament, the workshops, right, in the, in the things that are going to be going on while we're doing the tournament. And this is really one of the most important parts of the tournament, because remember, we're taking that interest and we're using that interest to funnel it into long term learning. So while the tournaments are taking place, we'll have workshops that are going on at the same time of the tournament. So it may be we have a robotics workshops 
workshop that's going on from 10 to 11. And students that are not currently playing the game participate in those workshops. And so the whole point is that we have this robotic STEAM pioneer, somebody who's certified and um, has, has experience in teaching youth robotics. They'll come to the tournament, they'll do their workshop, and then we'll create that interest and be able to sign students up for their subsequent workshops that may be located at the Harrison House. Right. And I'm using that for an example, not not a, not kind of till I figure out kind of how that works. But that's just an example of how the Harrison House serving as our STEAM our supporter, linking up with those students and then being um, officially backed or in partnership with the housing authorities. OK, uh, so the workshops will include things like robotics, computer coding. Uh, we understand building a holistic student and what we have to do far past with academics or technical skills. So we'll do things around mental health awareness, um, drones, even looking at for for some of our adult members, uh, adult residents, some uh, certifications that will lead to Section 3 opportunities. All right. So the last one is our ask. Our ask, and our ask is a little different. Um, really, just you know who you are, right? So we're looking at your housing authority, your HUD member. Then uh, we're looking at connecting to your families. So it may be a blast that's sent out from the housing authority, or something that's in their newsletter that's saying, "Hey, we're having this demonstration tournament," or you know, Steamnet is is coming to. Uh, Las Vegas and just give me more information. If it's the Harrison House, then you guys may, you know, send it out through your after school program, right? So, but it just helps us to identify the and connect with our underserved uh, families. Also, any STEAM program vendors that you guys may be already using, you may already have somebody that teaches computer coding. We want to know who that person is so that we can, you know, so that we can put them inside of this collaboration that we have. And then the last one is uh, facilitation uh, and of locating event hosting space. So just like you saw in the in the walkthrough for the tournament, all of those different levels from the demonstration all the way through, we're going to have to have everyone's help in identifying and locating event hosting space, and then all of the other resources that we need that will come along with that. So that is it in a nutshell. All right, fire off the questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. One, one of the, one probably one of our most significant partnerships um, that we are right on the cusp of bringing on board is uh, our pending partnership with NASEF, and they are the national, the North American. Esports uh, collaborative, uh, something like that. They're, they're the biggest esports provider in terms of like research based, educational based ways that esports actually help students' attitude and help students in academic areas. So, what we're doing is making a league specifically for us that the head of that league will liaison with all of our different markets and show them how to create these esports clubs, show the set up how to set up these tournaments, show them everything that they need, even from the, the academic side. How do we, you know, push a lot of learning inside of 
what the students are already interested in doing in esports. So um, we recognize that was a, a gap, right? That even when we come and we do a demonstration, there are still students, you know, wanting to do more. And so uh, the partnership with NACEF actually gives us an opportunity to not only train the, the, the people that are on the ground, but also be able to leave um, programming and be able to have the students to continue the game while we're not there. Y yes, Ms. Harvey. William, those are PlayStation games, right? Yeah, well, some of them are cross. So you have uh, Rocket League, you could play it on PlayStation or um, Xbox, I think Brawlhalla, you could play it. Well, you know what? All of them are available on Xbox or PlayStation. I know specifically with Brawlhalla and Rocket League, a person playing a PlayStation can play a person that's playing it, uh, playing on an Xbox. So those are the two cross-platform games, but each one of them can be played on either console. Right, and they have discussion groups online. They they have a lot of stuff online. It, it's not about our, the you know it's the information out there. It's all about gathering it and putting it in one kind of understandable package. And that's what we're working with NACEF to to help us do. Okay. That's the worker. That's yeah, that, that's the workup. So, you know, just getting this going, right? Um, getting the students to become excited, understand the benefits, not the student, not just the students understanding the benefits, but everybody uh, inside of this beehive to understand the benefits of esports. Because if you're not, you know, um, if you don't understand it, you think it's a waste of time, right? So it, there's going to be a, a curve in getting the adults in the room to understand the benefits. Um, and then you can start with lower level things, maybe like Scratch, um, and then work up to Unreal or Unity. But you understand from Mr. Meyer, Mr. Wire from um, I'm assuming working in Unreal, that they, you have to have some type of fundamental wherewithal at some level, because it can be very intimidating. I, I would like to um, open up the floor to um, the, the, the team in Vegas to see if y'all have any questions.